Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates. I need to know what the f that is on the wall behind you. Oh, that's a really great question. Uh, this is art. Um, this is uh, art made of wool. This is this is craft, uh, and it, it's available on Etsy. So it is, this is wool well, art. It's a tapestry, well, well, and it's... I see that, but like, what? Okay, so for those of you guys who are not watching the YouTube version... I don't, um, know, I, I don't know that I have my camera set up to see the oh no shot actually here. I'll have to I'll have to give folks oh. a, sh a a look at what it is that we're talking yeah. about this monstrosity. It makes because... me it makes me feel like the devil in the Devil's Advocate. You know when like they mm -hmm. go to his office and the the walls are that disconcerting uh, sculpture. So that's. Uh -huh. That's the so, aesthetic. So it's not for. anything like specific. It's kind of like whatever I imagine it to be. Cause like it looks like maggots maybe. Sure. Yeah. Maybe no, it's... there's definitely like a worm or um, I've also heard intestines. That's something that comes mm. up for, for a lot of people. Uh, it feels like an ecosystem could be roots, you know, could be, yeah. uh, could be uh, the underworld could be wrestling ghosts, uh, you know, just something off putting uh, and dark, you know, <laughs> No, did you make this? No, of course not. Uh, oh. no, this was this was an Etsy purchase, and we were we were looking for something, you know, because we, as a fellow podcaster, right, like soft mm -hmm. things on the wall is uh, is a positive yes. thing. So we were looking for. Uh, we knew that we wanted a tapestry, um, and then we were looking at a bunch of stuff online, and this was the the most interesting um, thing. But we've been living with it for for a minute now. Um, it's a lot. Yeah, it's really, it's intense, but it's, you know, it's unique and it's clearly a conversation starter. So, sure, you know, I'm in my uh, daylight studio. I just have a white wall behind me. So, so maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe we could suggest that like my art is, you know, those, those artists that sell like a blank canvas for like $25,000 and it's like, you know, yes, it's whatever yes. you imagine is on there. So that's my art. It's just... Whatever you want to imagine back there. I, um, I'm a, I'm a, I have a cluttered mind and I prefer a cluttered studio. Um, mm -hmm. so I am, I'm somebody who likes to, I like hanging things and, you know, art that's, that's crammed and, and cramped up. And we consulted with an interior designer that was like, oh, that's going to make the face, the space feel, uh, cluttered and off-putting. And I was like, that is exactly the kind of studio atmosphere that I'm trying to create. Other people <laughs> should feel uncomfortable here. <laughs> oh my god well i mean we definitely your podcast definitely does cover some <laughs> uncomfortable subjects for uh -huh. some people so your podcast is called the oldest profession um and can you explain to our audience what you mean by that and specifically what topics does your show explore yeah so the the mission of the podcast is to sort of reclaim our history because sex workers have always been a part of the story we're we're everywhere we're in every civilization um and we've been players in you know massive world events and so all the our fo um our podcast focuses on a figure from history that either engaged in sex work or was maligned as a sex worker um and we tell their story and we try to contextualize them in their their own time and pull lessons that might be useful to contemporary sex worker rights advocates that are very much still fighting for our voices and stories to be heard. So who is perhaps your favorite figure that you've covered? Or maybe the most recognizable to people? I, well, those are, those are different. Um, one of my favorite figures from history is uh is veronica franco who was a um a poet in um you know the sort of renaissance um uh you know she was a venetian uh, poet um and she she was a very famous and accomplished author 
at a time during a period of history in a place where it was illegal for women of her class to to read or access the public library. But there was an exception that was made to courtesans for reasons that we that we go into um, in the podcast. And she was an unapologetic advocate uh, for women in her, of her class and station. Um, and she is one of many, many voices that we try to elevate and reconsider and reexamine um, on the podcast because I think that we all would have been better served if, um, you know, Venetian politicians um, and the the elites of the period had listened to Veronica Franco um, over their other advisors. You know, I think that we would be living in a more compassionate world today. It's interesting when you look at courtesans from that time period, because like you said, they are unusually educated versus, you know, women who are of the upper class. Yes. Uh, why do you think that is? Um, I think that there's a you know, there's a long history behind the the division of the you know Madonna whore. Uh, you know, a, a lot of biblical scholars you sort of go back into history and look at the archetypes that um, that the Bible is sort of reconfiguring. Um, Ishtar is a, a very old goddess. She is uh, the goddess of love and war from the ancient Babylonian Empire. And the legend is that she was born a virgin every morning and she went to bed a whore every night. And so these uh, you know supposed Supposed opposites are, you know, contained in the body of, of one deity. Um, and as, you know, any person who was once a virgin and is not anymore, this can be, you know, you can be these things in, in one lifetime. But the, you know, the Bible, we divide uh, this into the two Marys, right? The Virgin Mother and then Mary Magdalene uh, that sort of occupy those, those archetypal places. Um, we see this again with, uh, with the story of Genesis. You know, Eve is... Um, of Adam, right, of Adam's rib, uh, so his sort of like daughter wife, um, naive enough to, to fall for the snake oil salesman. But an earlier version of Genesis talks about Adam's first wife, Lilith, who was made from, you know, the same clay as Adam and refused to submit to him specifically during sex, but like probably during the rest of the time too. And, you know, for this, she, she left the garden and was, was sort of demonized. But I, I think that, you know, during the Renaissance, during the, the period of time where the, the Holy Roman Empire is the governing body throughout Europe, the idea of women um, pursuing their own intellectual uh, ideas or becoming well-educated was, uh, you know, an invitation to the devil. There's a whole genre of literature uh, written during this period about why women are like so susceptible to sin. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.